Hi, this is Sean from Geovision Technical Support. Today, I will be introducing some features that are exclusive to GBVMS 18 platform. GBVMS 18 platform is a full-featured AI-powered software. It includes not only all the features from GBVMS 17 platform, but also incorporates events from face detection, face recognition, and AI-powered IP cameras for an all-inclusive video management. In today's video, I will cover five exclusive features, which are face recognition, PVD or people and vehicle detection, integration with GeoVision AI cameras, display PLS transaction without live view, and SIP server. We will go over the setup process and provide a demo for each feature. Let's start with face recognition. Face recognition integrates the facial recognition abilities of GV face recognition cameras and GV AI FR software for the system to distinguish detected human faces. Based on the face database of the cameras and servers connected, this feature displays the name of the recognized person on the live view while recording the recognition events during video recording. Here we will use VD8700 face recognition camera for the demonstration. First, we need to enroll faces into the VD8700's database. To do so, we need to access the camera's web interface. Click System Settings, then click Events and Alerts, and then choose Face Recognition. Then navigate to the Management tab here and then click Add New Record. Now in this section, you will need to enter the person's name and organization. And you can also assign the person to a group here. Then uh, click Browse to upload a picture of the person. And then click Save. Now you can see that uh, the person has been enrolled to the VD8700 face recognition camera. Next, we will move to the VMS software. On VMS, you will need to enroll the faces from the camera. On the main screen, click toolbar, configure, and then choose face manager. Here you will see all the AI FR software and GeoVision FR cameras connected to the VMS. You can sync data between multiple hosts in Face Manager by using the sync feature. Since we only have one VD8700 connected, we will just enroll the faces from this camera. Select the camera, then click Face Enrollment here. Now all the faces enrolled on the camera will show up. Click the green check button to enroll all the faces. After finishing enrolling the faces, we can open up the live view for VD8700. And as you can see, when a face appears in the live view, the name of the person will be displayed above the face. In the Live View window, there is a feature called Face ID, which allows you to check on the recognized faces. To access Face ID, click Toolbar, Tools, and then select Face ID. The faces will pop up live in the top of the window when being recognized. You can access the playback for the face recognition event by double-clicking on the event. We also provide a detailed face log in the playback window. To access the detailed face log, click Toolbar, Tools, and then select Face Recognition. Now you can see that it is very similar to the Face ID in the Live View window. However, in this section, you will see detailed information for each event. And you can filter the results by clicking the search button in the upper right corner here. 
You can set up、uh, different criteria to search for the face recognition events, such as、uh, time, name, gender, and so on. And just like Face ID, you can double-click the、uh, event to access the playback. Let's move on to the next feature: PVD or People in Vehicle Detection. With this feature, GPBMS is able to distinguish whether the moving object is a vehicle or a person. It is useful when you want to record vehicle or people-related events only. So, for example, a tree swaying in the wind or a dog running across the street. These kinds of events will not trigger the camera to record if you set up PVD motion detection. To set up PVD motion detection, click Toolbar, Configure, System Configure, and then choose Record Setting. Now we need to click the Setting button under the Motion column here. And、uh, in the PVD section here,、uh, please make sure to enable this feature. And we can configure a system to detect people or vehicle or both from the drop-down list here. And enable record to record a video for this channel. And please、uh, make sure to choose PVD motion from the drop-down list here. And enable smart search. Uh, if you wish to use Smart Motion Search, which we will demonstrate later, and enable Register Motion Event here、uh, for the system to log the PVD events, and then click OK to save. After setting up PVD motion detection, you can access the AI event table to check on the logs for all the AI events. Click Toolbar, Tools, System Log, and select AI Event Table. The AI events will pop up live on the top. You can see that、uh, AI Event Table provides some detailed information for the events,、uh, such as detected objects. It can be either a person or a vehicle, and it also shows you the event type. For example, we have.、Uh, People in vehicle motion here, and the object is a vehicle. And just like Face ID, you can double-click on the event to access the playback. As mentioned earlier, you can also use Smart Motion Search to look up PVD events in the playback window. Smart Motion Search allows you to define the region of interest on the recorded videos to search for PVD events. To access Smart Motion Search, click Toolbar, Tools, and then select Object Search. Now, in the drop-down list, we need to、uh, choose Smart Motion Search, and then click the Setting button. In this section, you can draw、uh, your region of interest to search for the PVD events, and then click OK. You can also define、uh, the time frame for a search here, and then click the search button. Now, all the PVD events that happened inside of the predefined region will show up. And you can click、uh, the frame to access the playback. Let's move on to the next feature, which is integration with GeoVision AI cameras. GeoVision AI cameras come with a deep learning AI engine for AI video processing. And these AI video processing can be integrated into the VMS 18 platform. The AI video processing can be displayed on both the live view and the playback. To enable this feature, we need to set up AI video processing on the camera's web interface first. Access the camera, navigate to the intelligence section. Here you can see there are several AI video analytics. And we will provide a demo for each feature. 
Let's start with the first one, uh, which is crossline. Crossline detection generates an alarm when an object moves past uh, the detection threshold in the direction you've defined. It can be used to monitor vehicles and people entering or exiting the gate. To set up crossline detection, first we need to click the setting button for crossline detection. Next, uh, tick the checkbox to enable the feature. And then we need to click the add button to add a new detection rule. You will see a detection line appear in the preview window, and you can tilt the line and drag the line around to your preferred position. You can also configure the detected object, uh, such as a uh, human or vehicle or the direction of the event. And then click Save. After all the settings have been set up on the camera, now we need to move back to the BMS software. In the Live View window, click Tools, Configure, and then choose Video Process. Then we need to choose IPCVA from the drop-down list. IPCVA stands for IP Camera Video Analytics. Tick the checkbox for the camera and then click set it. Here you will see all the video analytic features from the camera. Tick the checkbox for crossline. You can click the arrow button here to access advanced settings such as IO output, email notification, and so on. In the button, tick the checkbox uh, for record to record a video for AI event. And if you wish the detected object to be marked with a red rectangle, please enable a live draw rectangle here. And then click OK to save. And click OK again to save. Now let's see what it looks like in the live view window. As you can see, every time a person or a vehicle crosses the line, the object will be marked uh, with a red rectangle. And you can also configure the system to trigger alarm or send email notifications every time uh, an object crosses the line. Next, we have Enter Area and Leave Area. With Enter Area or Leave Area, an alarm is generated when a person or a vehicle enters or leaves the boundaries of the detection area. These two features can be used uh, in different scenarios. For example, you can use Enter Area to monitor a preserved parking space to avoid other vehicles occupying the space. You can use Leave Area to monitor the vehicles in predefined area to prevent them from being stolen. To enable this feature, uh, we need to click the setting button here, and then tick the checkbox to enable the feature. Next, click the Add button to add a new detection rule. Then the detection area will appear in the preview window. You can reshape the detection area and drag it to your preferred position. Next, we need to enable the corresponding IPCVA option on the BMS software. The process is the same, therefore I won't go through each step for this process. And here is what the live view looks like. You can see that every time an object enters the area, it will be marked uh, with a red rectangle. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can uh, configure a system to trigger alarms or send email alerts when an AI event occurs. The setup process for leave area is completely identical to enter area. The only difference is that Enter Area detects objects entering the predefined area, whereas Leave Area detects objects leaving the predefined area. Here I will skip the setup process and show you the live view for this feature.
As you can see, when the vehicle leaves the predefined area, it will be marked with a red rectangle. And again, you can configure assistant to trigger alarm or send email notifications. The next feature is intrusion. With intrusion detection, an alarm is generated when an object enters the boundaries of the detection area. You can implement intrusion detection in various scenarios. For example, you can use it to monitor the boundaries of your property, to make sure that no one climbs over your wall. To enable this feature, we need to click the setting button here. Then we need to click uh, the add button to add a new detection rule. And you will see that uh, a detection area will uh, appear on the live view window here. And again, you can drag the area around to your preferred position and then reshape it. And then click save. And again, we need to go back to the VMS software and enable the corresponding options from the uh, IPCBA section. And here is what the live view looks like for intrusion detection. Next feature is face detection. Face detection can be used to prevent shoplifting proactively. It also allows the VMS to blur out the detective faces. To enable face detection, we need to click the setting button here, and then enable the feature. And on the right here, you can see some additional settings, and the snapshot area is the detection area. You can configure a system to detect full screen or just a specific area. Snapshot mode allows you to configure the action when a face is detected. Then click Save. After setting up face detection on the camera, we will need to navigate to the corresponding IPCVA option on the VMS. Now I will demonstrate the face blur uh, feature from the VMS. So uh, we need to click the arrow button here and then uh, take the checkbox to enable the blur feature. Okay, then click OK to save. Now let's see uh, what the live view looks like for the face blur feature. As you can see, the face is blurred out when it enters the live view window. And this feature allows uh, the VMS to be compliant with the privacy law in some certain countries. The next feature is people flow counting. The people flow counting feature can count the number of person uh, entering and leaving the vicinity, which is useful at an entrance or exit setting. To enable the feature, we need to click the setting button here and then enable the feature. Here you can see a detection line and just like other features, you can drag it to your preferred position. You can also rotate, extend, or shorten the line. And on the right, you can see uh, some extra configurations uh, such as the data report interval the time to reset the counter, the direction, and the counting type. We provide three counting types, uh, which are total number, people entered, and people exited. And then click Save. Next, we need to enable the corresponding settings in the IPCBA section on the VMS software.
Now let's take a look at the live view. As you can see when a person crosses the line, the number of the counter in the lower right corner will also change based on the number of individuals and the direction. The next feature is Crowd Density Monitoring. Crowd Density Monitoring can be used to prevent or dissolve accidents in places such as railway platforms. To set up Crowd Density Monitoring, click the setting button and then enable the feature. In the preview window, you will see a detection area. And just like other features, you can uh, reshape the area and then drag it to your preferred position. On the right, you can set up report interval, and you can also set up different stages of alarm with different numbers. And then click Save. Next, open the VMS and uh, enable the corresponding IPCVA option. Now let's take a look at the live view. As you can see, the total number of individuals will be displayed in the lower right corner, and all the individuals will be marked. Here you can also configure the system to trigger alarms when the number of individuals exceeds your predefined number. The next feature is loitering. The camera will trigger alarm when objects are loitering in a predefined area. It can be used in different scenarios, for example, people wandering in restricted areas, illegal parking, and so on. To set up loitering detection, navigate to the loitering tab and then enable the feature. Now in the preview window, you can draw uh, your detection area. On the right, you can set up minimum loitering time and the detection object. Then click Save. Next, open the VMS and enable the corresponding IPCVA option. Now let's take a look at the live view for loitering detection. When a vehicle or a person enters the detection area and stays inside the area for more than the predefined time, the object will be marked and you can configure a system to trigger alarms as well. Let's move on to the last feature, uh, which is temperature measurement. Geovision thermal camera provides two temperature related features. Uh, which are fire alarm and temperature measurement. These two features can be used to monitor charging stations for electric vehicles or warehouses that store flammable materials. In this video, we will be using the temperature measurement feature for demonstration. To enable temperature measurement, we need to navigate to the fire detection section and then click temperature measurement. and tick the checkbox to enable this feature. And you can configure the system to uh, display the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature for the detection area. And click Save. Next, navigate to the Area tab. Enter a name for the detection area. Then you need to choose a detection type. It can be a point, a line, or an area. Here we will use area detection for the demonstration. Click draw area to draw a detection area on the preview window. And then click the setup button to set up alarm. Here we provide uh, several different rules such as above or below maximum temperature, minimum temperature, and so on. Click OK to save. 
Last but not least, uh, tick the checkbox to enable the detection area. Then click save. Next, open the VMS software and enable the corresponding IPC VA option. Let's take a look at the live view. The camera will show the average temperature for the detection area. It can also pinpoint the spots for the highest and the lowest temperature inside of the detection zone. We have gone through all the AI features from GeoVision AI cameras. Let's move on to the next feature, which is displaying POS data without the camera's live view. Here we will use GB POS Text Center for the demonstration. After setting up the POS system, we need to expand the system tray by clicking the arrow here. And then double click the POS text center. Choose the uh, POS system and then click start. Now back to the VMS software. We need to drag the camera and the POS data into the live view window. PLS integration has been a part of GeoVision software for a long time. In the past, the transaction data can only be shown in the camera's live view with the text overlay feature. On VMS 18 platform, you can open a dedicated window to see the transaction data without the live view in the background. This allows you to get a clearer view of the data with less distractions from the live view. The last feature is integration with SIP or Session Initiation Protocol. GeoVision has integrated SIP into the VMS 18 platform. This means that you can call other SIP devices or receive calls from them with the VMS software. Here we will use MiniSIP server and MicroSIP for the demonstration. First, you will need to create an account for uh, GVVMS, and we have also created an account for the MiniSIP and named it Meeting Room. Minisip will work as a phone in this case. After setting up your SIP server, open the VMS software and open up the content list. Click the Add button in the SIP section and then choose Add SIP Server. Here you need to enter the name for the SIP server and enter the IP address for the server. Down here, uh, you need to enter the ID and the password created for the VMS on your SIP server. And then click OK to save. Next, click the Add button again, and then choose Add SIP Client. Enter the name and ID for the SIP device, and here we will use the meeting room account we created on the mini SIP server. and then click OK to save. Now you can right click the client and make a call. Let's switch to the meeting room PC. And you can see that the VMS is currently reading the meeting room now. And that's it for today's video. If you need more information, please make sure to check out our website or contact us by using the contact info on the screen. Thank you for watching.